Hello. So it's Final Fantasy XIV time for a little bit. Um, I think I'm gonna play uh, Final Fantasy VII next. I think that's the plan. But I'm gonna. I want to finish a couple of things up in fourteen first. One of them is the Hildebrand quest one. So. I also did some stuff with my house today. Like I had some extra gill. I mean, I'm still trying to make some, but I had some, and I think I bought me a pretty purple tree and a plant bed. I'm not sure what this is for. I gardening. Okay, I just need to click on. It's possible to grab a diverse variety of plants, both garden patch and flower pots, to get started. See the soil, some kind of very scarce. <gasps> this is how you color your chocobo. I need to do this because I want to make my chocobo purple. Shocker, right? Purple. But yeah, I want you both to start. Going. All right. But I also got a little bench. See, that I can sit on. But I can't swing on it, but I can sit on it. Yeah, yeah. And I redid my hair. But yeah, so house is coming along good. I like it. I, I'm so excited I got a house. I just need to figure out what I want the exterior to look like. I'm gonna change that. But, Hildebrand! Um, I don't remember where I was, and I need to finish this too. Um, I don't remember where I was in the Hildebrand quest line. <gasps> Wait, yes I do. Um, um, Where is that? What? What? I'm sorry. Go lay down and go to sleep. Okay, go lay down and go to sleep. A little terror. Um, what was I doing before he scared living daylights out of me? Uh, where was it? Car! Oh me, oh my. I kind I really wish. I really wish I could go through all of the quests again. The story quests again for the first time. Like, yeah. That would just be a lot of fun to do that. All right, here we go. Business of betrothal. All right. Arabella. I'm not reading this out loud. I'm sorry, guys. Her purported beauty, I should say. You see, none have actually seen the girl in the flesh. Apparently, her father is the overprotective sort. 
Some say that the maiden has never set foot outside the family's well-guarded estate. But all this is about to change. Rumor has it that the girl is to be wed, and not just to anyone, mind you, to the heir of the Brugrier Consortium. The formal announcement is set to be made at a commemorative feast to be jointly hosted by the two families, family businesses. The venue is Costa del Sol, where preparations are going on as we speak. Word on the street is that the bride-to-be will be making a rare public appearance. It is there that the thief intends to strike. I couldn't be more certain of it. Piqued your interest, have I? No. My sources tell me that the bride's father is already in Costa del Sol overseeing the preparations. This is one scoop I'm not going to miss, and you're welcome to come along. Costa del Sol, here we come! I do this list on dancer too. And I, I like my dancer outfit. I really need to get some purple dye though, because I want to dye it purple. Shocker. <laughs> like, I just, just, just give me everything purple and I'll be good. <laughs> I like purple a lot, okay? Um, is that how you saw that? I'm putting this on Twitter. Hang on. I've looked this up before. Why though? Why what? Why am I putting it on Twitter? Because I want people to come watch me. And if I don't put it on there... No, the hair. I don't know. I just- I've all- okay. I've always wanted to dye my hair. I've just been too chicken to do it. Like, I just- I don't know. I mean, I like my hair color the way it is. But I would really just like to try purple. I think it'd be really pretty. I'd kind of like to do it like this, too. Where it's white at the tip. I think that would be really pretty. But I think the only person that I'd want to do it would be my stylist at my parents. There. I think she'd be the only person that I could trust. So, I just don't know. You're not one of my associates. This banquet is for invited guests only. If you have no business here, be on your way at once. What a prickly man. Beg pardon, good sir. My name is Ellie, a reporter for the Mithril Eye. If I might just have a moment of... Ah, yes. That two-gill sensationalist rag. I read your tiresome screed about the self-styled phantom thief and his letter of challenge. If you have come to tell me my daughter is in danger, I can assure you that your concern is entirely unwarranted. I have not kept my Arabella safe to this day to see her whisked away from me by some fly-by-night rogue. I have spared no expense in securing the best protector protection that money can buy. Whatever, he didn't hire me. Oh, good lord. They look like idiots. The, blast the brass blades of the Gerbera, an elite unit of the most lethal swordsmen in the Sultanate. I say one of them once caused a man's heart to burst just by looking at him askance. Okay. The moment they set eyes on the would-be thief will be his last. Okay. If the thief is obliged, obliging enough to allow himself to be seen, or do those goggles serve some purpose other than making the wearer look utterly ridiculous? Thank you. I agree. They look utterly ridiculous. All right, shoot, get on.
Oh, Jesus. This guy. He looks like Estinian's lost brother. <laughs> Consulting Inspector Briarton, your reputation precedes you, and what, pray tell, would you propose? I have promised some of the wealthiest men in the realm that my daughter will be attending the festivities. To renege on my word would have dire implications for the family trade. My proposal is a simple one. Entrust the investigation to me. The thief will be in shackles before the banquet commences, and it will cost you not a whit of your precious skill. Okay. Where's Hildebrand? There's the light. The girl. Is that him back there? I can't tell. It looks like it. <laughs> Very well. Let us see if your reputation is deserved. But consider yourself warned. Greater fortunes than you, you will ever than you will ever know hinge upon this banquet. I will not tolerate any disturbances. Well. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Where is he? Still touching concern for his coin purse. Or such touching concern for his coin purse. If only he could muster the same for his daughter. Yeah, really. But do tell, Inspector, after he slipped under our noses the last time, what makes you so confident that you can catch our thief this time around? Our man may boast a thousand faces, but he has but a single modus operandi. And it is painfully obvious. Okay. A letter of challenge, a precious treasure, whisked away from its rightful owner in the broad light of day. This tells me that our thief is an attention seeker with supreme confidence in his abilities. Doubtless he means to target the maiden using the same methods he used to abscond with the treaty blade. Okay. Even now the fiend is in our midst, having assumed the identity of someone who will be in close proximity to Miss Arabella at the feast. I have already narrowed the field. Okay. Arabella's betrothed Vance would be an obvious target for our thief. So too would be his father, Morgan. Yalta no Noto and his wife Sainana, the guests of honor, will give a toast to the couple's happiness. Both will be standing close to the stage where the bride-to-be is set to appear. I see in every single one of because I saw him just then. He was just talking to this guy. Needless to say, we cannot rule out Gugu Rimu himself. Finally, we have Lewinhard, a steward of Gugu Gugu's estate and Miss Arabelle's personal attendant. All the key players, save for the Lapis Maiden herself, have assembled in Costa del Sol. Doubtless, the phantom thief lurks among them, his face concealed, gathering information and planning his course of attack. There they are back there. Well, there she is. There he is. We will begin our questioning of the suspects immediately. Should you encounter any suspicious individuals, you are to report back to me at once. Manderville, I could smell the stench of idiocy and incompetence from a mile away. The pleasure's all mine contriving, Inspector Briarden. Forgive me for not revealing myself sooner. I was simply conducting a bit of preliminary undercover investigative work. Yet does either my ingenious disguise with such ease? Yes, I dare say your powers of observation have <laughs> even my own. <laughs> We're not friends. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, have arrived to defend the maiden's honor as only a Manderville man can. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> he does realize there's still fish on his head, doesn't he? Nope. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Good inspector, I realize we have not seen eye to monocle in the past, but a fair maiden's virtue, mayhap her very life, is at stake. From one gentleman to another, let us put aside our differences. Yes, I would welcome your assistance in this case. Good God.
Me assist you. Aren't you a funny man? <laughs> oh, it makes no matter. My plan is so flawless that not even your bungling can interfere this time. If you wish to assist me, you may do so by keeping watch over the suspects. In the meantime, I have a promising lead to investigate. I shall return before the banquet begins. While I know this may be asking much, do try not to do anything too stupid in my absence, will you? I would speak with you, but not here. I will be waiting for you outside Costa del Sol. Come quickly, for we do not have the luxury of time. He's talking to me? I really like it. You've come, excellent. With that buffoon suitably distracted, we can get to more important matters. Before we proceed, what might I call you? An unremarkable An unremarkable name, but it will suffice. Now answer the answer me this, Miranda. You were there when the phantom thief in the guise of Lady Drilda stole off with the tree blade. Was there anything about our foe's disguise that struck you as particularly noteworthy. Intriguing. Where most would point out the sheer physical perfection of the disguise you term an eye within. A thorough inspection of the mask left behind at the scene revealed a tiny prism sewn into the fabric. It is this stone that allows him to change appearances at will. And yet, like you, this was of secondary concern to me. Oh, well, I screwed up. <laughs> From movements to mannerisms to that utterly obnoxious personality, the thief did not merely look like Lady Drilda. He was her. Such a feat could not be accomplished by magical trickery alone. We are dealing with a clever and thorough criminal. Not content to rely on his ample powers of disguise, he studies his targets closely before assuming their identity. He emulates them utterly and completely, that not even their closest friends or family could detect that aught is amiss. What doing? Hildebrand! What are you doing? All the key players arrived at Costa del Sol three days ago, and preparations for the banquet began. This would afford our thief more than enough time to study his would-be target. And yet, some disguises are more challenging than others. Put yourself in the mind of our phantom, Miranda. If you were the thief, whose identity would you first assume? Probably one of the brass blades. Make some food. What's for what? Precisely. Clearly, you are far less useless than the, than the bumbling inspector who's company. What you gonna make? Strong in number, few of words. Able to come and go as they please. A fearsome reputation to scare away any... Who would draw near enough to realize something was amiss. An ideal entry into Costa del Sol for a man. You don't know? Deducing as much, I made a point to question brass blades in the area. Little to my surprise, I learned that there was one man who had not been seen at his favorite alehouse for, for three days past. Our thief has not made a habit of wanton murder. Doubtless, the poor man is lying naked in a ditch not far from here. In addition to general security duties, each of the blades has been assigned to serve as bodyguard for one or more of the guests. If the man can tell us of his assigned charge, like as not, his answer will reveal the current identity of our thief. Our thief would not have had the time to carry the unconscious man far. I will canvass the immediate area. You begin your search on the outskirts of Costa del Sol. Okay. Look at that big old crab. Its name is Cancer. Okay. Hey, look, a naked dude. I found him. <laughs> Excellent. You are one of the less, incom less incompetent assistants I have worked with. Thank the gods, please free me from these chains before the snippers eat me alive. Don't be a baby. <laughs> <laughs> no.
Nova that video. They <laughs> brought him back to kill him again. <laughs> That's just mean. <laughs> there. Now tell me all that you can remember about what happened to you. And try to be brief. We just arrived in Costa del Sol. Had a briefing of sorts. Master Gugu gave us each our orders. Who we'd be looking after and the like. Had a mind to tour the area. Get my bearings. Next thing I knew, I felt the thwack on the back of my head. When I came to, here I was, stripped to my skibbies. Much to the char chargon of those of us who have to look at you. <laughs> you say you received orders from Master Gugu. Who was to be your charge? My memory's hazy, but ah, one was Morgant, father of the group. The other was a Lollapelon gent from Lumsa. Yalto Nolto. Now try your best to remember. Were there any other guests with whom you were ordered to interact? Come to think of it, yes. There was also the steward, Louis Hart. I was to review him with the schedule of events, discuss the protection of key supplies, that sort of thing. Morgant, Yalto Nolto, and Yulia Hart. Thank you. For an incompetent fool, your testimony has proved- He thinks everybody's a fool. This guy's a dick. Your testimony has proved astonishingly, astonishingly enlightening. I shall see this man back to the city and into the possession of some new clothes. After which I sh shall return to Costa del Sol to continue the investigation. Go on ahead of me, and for the love of God, just make sure that imbecile doesn't cause too much trouble in my absence. Could he be in on it? I mean, I guess he could, but why would he be? Right, I'm gonna look for something real quick. Supposed to be like a lone campfire? Maybe this is it. Have you gone into your minion tab, by the way? Yes. Got three pages worth of minions. No? What does this do? Oh, God. Oh my God, is there pet battling? <gasps> oh my gosh! I did not know that! There's pet battling in this game. How funny. Got the brand! You are a friend, and not a moment too soon, for I was about to commence my investigation in earnest. Tell me, did your your and Inspector Briarden's Avenue of Inquiry bear fruit? It most certainly did. No, I didn't know that was a thing. That's cool. I'm just sitting here while I wait for this PF to fill up for Insinger. Insinger farm parties. Is that to farm uh, EX for the mount? I'm just sitting. <gasps> How's your puppy? Collecting points. Puppy? I expect a multitude of pictures. Have you got a leash for him? What? <laughs> 
Have you got a leash for him? And a collar? Did you get him toys? How about a bed? And a bowl and a, like a water bowl and a food bowl? What kind of food are you getting him? Rest will be here tomorrow. Okay. But what kind of food are you getting him? Did you get him puppy food? Did you get him toys? He better have toys. Morgan, y'all, y'all to know to, and the steward Lewinhart, you say? This does not surprise me. Yes, I considered them all exceptionally suspicious from the start. He has little ropes to chew on. Okay, but did you get him a little squeaky toy? You gotta get him a squeaky toy. And something to cuddle with. He has to have something to cuddle with. And a blanket. He needs a blanket. No squeaky toys are choke hazards when he's that young. Okay. You have a blanket. Good. Oh. <laughs> he's so cute. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> All right. With the Lapis Maiden in danger, we cannot afford a moment's delay. I, Hildebrand, shall have our thief in shackles before the inspector returns. Wellness is the brand of food. It's like yellow and purple. Okay. I'm so excited. Did you get him treats so you can train him? He needs little treats to give him. Fear not, friend. The inspector shall be none the wiser. Ha ha! <laughs> oh god, what is he gonna do? I'm so excited you're getting a puppy. I can't wait to see lots of pictures and hear, hear all the funny stories. Of him peeing on your carpet. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. <laughs> if he had hoped to have the fiend for himself, he should not have simplified the task for me, so. I have wood floor. You're still gonna have to clean up doggy pee. <gasps> Are you gonna let him sleep with you? Ah, there is one of our suspects standing suspiciously under that canopy over there. <laughs> okay. Just you wait, Fiend. I shall rip the mask from your face and reveal you to, for the rogue that you are. He will sleep in the cage. You, you're you putting him in the cage? In a cage? Why don't you get him a bed? A-lid. There's a bed in the cage? But you're putting him in a cage. Stand back, friend. The man we pursue is a criminal mastermind. The merest slip of the tongue could put our case, nay, our very lives, in danger. But have no fear, Miss L. Ready your quill, that you might record my every word as I employ the time-honored art of parley, handed down from Manderville Main to reveal our foe. Yes, because I don't want him to wander around an unfamiliar place in the first few weeks. He needs to learn it first. You're putting him in a cage. A cage. Your poor puppy. A poor, poor puppy. We put Kizzy in a kennel one night. <laughs> the second night we tried it and she whined and I couldn't stand it. So we let her out. <laughs> I was just like, I can't do it. <laughs> I can think of a few topics that would interest my readers less. What's this wee business? <laughs> oh, right. Thal made me put her in a kennel the first night. And I was like, nope. <laughs> he made me do it. Of course I did. <laughs> yes. And for the record, we don't let her sleep with us. She's... She gets up in the middle of the night and has an accident. Like, I don't get it. She was doing fine. Like, we had... That's where I draw the line. Okay. <laughs> okay. I won't show them the pictures of her in bed with you while you're napping. It's fine. <laughs> but she's just... Recently, she's just been having accidents. Like, almost every night. We make her sleep in here. 
If she sleeps in here, she won't, like, we have to shut the door. She won't have an accident if she sleeps in here, though. And we take her out at, like, let, what time? She went out when the kids went to bed, I think. I think he thought took her out. But then, like, after I get done streaming, I usually take her outside. And, like, then when we get up in the morning, she goes out and goes to the bathroom. But she has accidents! And it's like on my carpet and I'm so mad at her! <laughs> but if she sleeps in here, she doesn't have an accident. Because we shut the door and she can't go out and pee on my carpet. Because I really like my carpet. Boop her nose. No, because like, like we rub her nose in it and tell her no. But whoever had her before us abused her. Because she freaks out, like, if you get a broom, she's terrified of the broom. Like, absolutely terrified of it. If I get it out of the closet, she, like, tucks her tail and hides. So, I try not to get it out around her or let her see it. Because she just freaks. She hides. And it's so sad. Yeah. So, no, I we've never, like booped her nose or anything not you know to hurt her or tell her no or something but she knows no like she knows it very well <laughs> but uh she yeah she's sweet she's wonderful all right don't worry inspector i brought my quill and journal too your adoring fans won't miss a word capital this is why you are my favorite assistant, Nashu. Now behold, as I ensnare our prey with a web of words leading to his inevitable demise. The puppet is only six weeks old. Oh my gosh. Aelid, I can't wait to see more pictures. He's so cute. <sighs> Good evening, Master Gugu Remu. And a fine evening it must be. For you most of all, allow me to offer my most heartfelt congratulations on your betrothal the enchanting Miss Arabelle. What is this nonsense? Arabelle is my daughter. You who just who with the seven hills are you anyway? Guards! Guards! Ah ha ha. Now old your chocobos, Gugurumu. I recognize the lad. This is Hildebrand, agent of inquiry and inspector extraordinaire. Come to save the lovely lass from the clutches of the phantom thief, have you? I reckon we owe this owe the man our gratitude. Eye veins? The Phantom Thief? Balderdash and Rot, if you ask me. That said, my betrothed must be quite the beauty indeed to have- He hasn't seen her yet?! To have such rumors told about her. Perhaps she's worthy of me after- Okay, I don't like this guy. <laughs> he exudes an unusual degree of confidence for such an effect. Fashion challenged youth. Most suspicious. He's a damn sight easier on the eyes than you. Oh, I don't know about that. Ah ha ha. That's me, Vans. Ever calm in the face of danger. Truly his father's son. Oh, great. A worthy heir to the... Uh, Brugger Consortium, and a worthy match for my daughter, I must say. Poor girl. Yes, I foresee many years of prosperity for our families. Or family, I should say. Ho ho. I would want to be kidnapped, too, if I was engaged to this guy. <laughs> Which reminds me, Master Vance, Arabella asked me to convey her gratitude to you for the golden clasp you sent some months ago. It has not left her neck since the day. Oh, that little trinket, t'was nothing. Tell your daughter the greatest treasures in the realm will be hers once we are wed. Great. The time-honored manageable art of parlay would be sleeping with the fishes now had Murgant not smoked up on your behalf. That said, nothing about the interactions between the three struck me as particularly unnatural. Ha ha ha, let us not rush to conclusions, Miss L. A gentleman fancies a more methodical approach. Yes, everything is proceeding according to my master plan. Okay. Oops, I was supposed to be taking this down, wasn't I? Everything is is proceeding according to my master plan. I saw only 
only to earn the trust of the families before confronting Yalta Nolto and Lewinhart, who have aroused my suspicion from the start. Come, we have the we have a thief to apprehend. Excuse me. Alright. Hmm, I've not seen your faces around here. We're the East Aldenau Trading Company, are we? Why, yes, good sir. Very much with them. Some might even say we are the East Aldenau Trading Company. Ha ha ha. Oh ho, pleasure to meet you. Do tell, is the Lapis Maiden as lovely as they say? Say Nana, here's no slouch herself, but like me, she's getting on in years. <clears throat> wow, that's you smart. Let's call your wife old. <laughs> no offense intended, my dear. Oh, but where are my manners? Y'all told Alto of the Bruguer Consortium, and this is my wife, Sinana. Sinana. I look forward to many profitable dealings with you and yours in the moons and years to come. I dare say this wedding and the joining together of our family businesses couldn't be happening at a better time, with all manner of fell beasts and beastmen taking aim at our wares. Why, just the other day, a shipment of imported foodstuff was waylaid by the Mandragoras. Nasty buggers, a lot of them. If I were twenty years younger, I'd dice them up myself and make a salad out of them. Hmm, you have... Heard of the Mandragoras, haven't you? Oh, but of course! I once spent a year honing body and mind with the fist of Ralgar. My fellow monks and I would chant several hundred mantra of what sits a day. Okay. And your food stores were occasionally raided by the ruthless band of rogue vegetables known as the Mandragoras, yes? Would it kill you to read the Mithril Eye and educate yourself from time to time? A fearsome lot they are. Rumor has it they'll not rest until every fruit or vegetable harvest for consumption has been freed from captivity. Why, they struck at the larder here just days ago. Our supplies were decimated. Fear not, my lady. I was able to arrange for an emergency shipment to replace the stolen produce. It arrived safely some time ago. Settle down, Sanana. Forgive my wife. She's always saying how meat is bad for her figure. And with that, I'd best go prepare my speech. Carry on, lads. Hmm. Crimey, none of those three were suspicious in the least, but we must not give up hope. Lest he of many faces has the last laugh. Where there is a will, a gentleman shall find a way. Come, Nashu, we must move quickly, or the Labus Maiden shall not be the only one to come to harm. You speak so fast, Inspector. The sign of a quick mind, I'm sure. Now where was I? Give up hope. He of many faces will last. Last. The Lapis Maiden shall not be the only one to come to harm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm not sure that captures the inspector's intended meaning. But this is no time for us to be standing around. Inspector Briardin will be back any moment now, and he's not the type to suffer excuses. Quite so, Miss Ellie. Fortunately, I have a plan. Let us investigate the foodstuffs of which Master Lou Hart spoke. Should we find any contradictions in his testimony, we consider... Can consider the man a prime suspect. Inspector Ryder will be back before long. Come, Nashi, this is no time to delay. Okay. Inspect the food supply. All right, crates of cra crates of assorted foodstuffs and a veritable host of luscious-looking coconuts. It appears that our man Lewin spoke truth. He gads. Are those explosives I spy concealed amongst these coconuts? Perhaps I spoke in haste. It would appear that we have found our phantom thief after all. 
Oh, those are mine, Inspector. I was looking for a place to set them down, you see, and those coconuts were looking awfully lonely. Not you. Far be it from me to cast doubt on your choice of hobbies. But what in the name of the Twelve would possess you to bring your creations to an investigation? Well, they were so helpful in jogging your memory that one time, and I just thought, now does this mean you won't be needing this piece of driftwood either? Your enthusiasm is always admirable, Nushu, but th in this event, I fear somewhat misdirected. Now, set the driftwood down over there and concentrate on taking your notes like the astute assistant you are. I feel like the driftwood is important. <laughs> it's going to be. <laughs> I say, we are most fortunate that confounding Inspector Briardren is otherwise occupied at the moment. Are he here... For he to chance upon the scene, he would veritably explode in rage. Now, let us dispose of these things before an errant ember sends us all to a fire demise. Confounding Inspector Briard and explode a fiery demise. God. Somebody is gonna find these notes. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be awful. You can see my door. I had to move my camera. There. Are you sure about that? Uh oh, don't look now, but someone has returned at the absolute worst possible time. You two were supposed to be keeping an eye on the suspects and staying out of trouble, yes? The inspector will have a fit if he sees you here. But, Miss Ellie, should Inspector Bryden come upon these explosives, the consequences will be even more dire. Miranda and I will see that the Inspector keeps a wide berth of this beach. You two must get out of here and qu be quick about it. Quick thinking, Miss Ellie. Come, Nashi. We shall return for your creations once Inspector Bryden has been led safely from the scene. Investigation calls, and we must heed its cry. <laughs> Crazy people. A burst of inspiration. What is this? Don't know. So, Hildebrand has managed this far not to destroy anything. Consider me something almost resembling impressed. Ha ha, indeed. We laugh about Hildebrand. Excuse me. Miranda and I have been waiting to hear your latest theories. We should go somewhere quiet and... An excellent idea, Miss Ellie. Ah, yes. That spot over there just by the crates should suffice. There, of all places. But surely we could find somewhere more scenic. I'm not here on vacation. I am here to solve a case. Besides, we cannot afford to have our conversation overheard. That junk-littered beach should afford us some welcome privacy. Yes, Inspector. Privacy, indeed. Bloody hell. Don't worry, Miranda. I'll figure out some way to lead him clear of the bombs. Is it just me, or is there a bit of a chill in the air? Perhaps we should go someplace warm. I, for one, welcome a respite from the sweltering heat. Besides, this will not take long. If you insist, Inspector. Through the questioning of a brass blade attacked by our quarry, I have identified the three individuals most likely to be our thief in disguise. To wit, Morgan, Yalto Nolto, and Lewinhart. The three of us shall split up, with each of us keeping watch over. 
Ahem, are the two of you listening? Yep. Of course we are. Beg pardon, Inspector. You look unwell, Miss Ellie. Perhaps you were right. I too feel a chill wind blowing in. Mayhap we should continue our conversation elsewhere. Ah, but there is no need. Wait here, and I shall build this. This is gonna go well. Ha ha ha, methinks the inspector has taken leave of his senses. The chance of locating suitable kindling in, on these barren shores is infinitesimal. The driftwood! <laughs> That's right, it's gonna be important. Here we are. This piece of driftwood should serve perfectly. As fortune would have it, I just happen to have a flint uh, stone on my purse. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> oh <God. laughs> He's got a torch. There is no cause for alarm. It is not blood that courses through the inspector's veins, but ice. I could not fathom a series of events that would lead such a calm and composed individual to lose his firm grip on that fiery torch. Remarkable insight, Inspector. I must record those words for posterity. Whee! It's flying! Oh no! Oh no! Hmm, what have we here? Everything is proceeding according to my master plan. Oh no! <laughs> Could this be another challenge from the Veen? Oh jeez. Oh my god. <laughs> Surely you jest, Inspector. It looks nothing like his usual card, see? Doubtless, it's just the idle ravings of some bad man. Perhaps so, but we must exercise due caution. Oh, there are two more pages! Oh my gosh! Give up hope. He of many faces will laugh last. It is not the Lapis Maiden alone that shall come to harm. <laughs> it is more direct than his previous challenges, but there can be no doubt as to the sender. <laughs> what is this talk of another victim? The final page holds the answer snuck down. <laughs> The final page. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> From the founding expector prior to we'll meet a fiery demise. <laughs> oh no! She's gonna sneeze! Oh no! <laughs> okay, come on. I am the warrior of light. Oh no. Oh no.
Okay, go grab it off of his head. Oh no, here it's... You saw through the fiend's ruse, but how? Oh, uh, let's just call it a reporter's intuition. <laughs> Are you hurt? A ringing in my ears, but otherwise no worse for the wear. You have my gratitude. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Is there a romance budding? <laughs> Hildebrand Manderville, were you able to learn aught of the fiend who made this ignoble attempt? I exhausted every effort, Inspector, yet I fear our quarry proves ever elusive. <laughs> Excellent. I might have died of shock if you had. Okay, asshole. At any rate, our foe has revealed himself as no mere thief, but a madman who will resort to cold-blooded murder. We must redouble our vigilance, lest the others come to harm. Vigilance, yes. Vigilance is the order of the day. What in the name of the gods? That's teeth! Those vegetables cost a fortune, and they're ruined! Ruined! Agent of inquiry? More like agent of injury and incompetence. You are to replace the supplies that you destroyed before the banquet begins, or I will see the entire lot of you rot in a gal. Wow. Okay. Okay. What was that terrible explosion coming from the beach? Is everyone safe? Fear not. The fiend's artless attempt on my life has been thwarted. Sadly, your food supply did not escape unscathed. Master Gugu... Gugu Rimu bids that the damaged ingredients be replaced with all speed. Good gods. This is no thief. This is a madman. As for replacing the ingredients, I fear that will <coughs> prove a difficult task. Excuse me. Those crates contained imported vegetables and consider of considerable rarity, you see. Vegetables that are in particularly short supply these days. What with the mandragoras at large. Even if I were to place the order immediately, it would ta likely take days to arrive. The mandragoras? I have heard of that fell band. Tell me, what manner of vegetables did they steal? The rarest was an import from the far east. I do not recall the name, but it very closely resembles the Eorzean dragon pepper, save for its color, which was a deep purple. Ooh, purple pepper! He thinks you just worry too much, Master Lumenhart. Our course of action is clear. We need only storm into the den of those overgrown weeds and steal your precious purple dragon peppers right back. I would advise against that, Inspector. These are no ordinary mandragoras, but rather a bloodthirsty band of killers given succulent flesh. Even the brass blades of the Gerbera proved unable to resist them. Oh, a formidable foe, formidable foe indeed. We are only the bur we're there only a ugh, we're only there a brave soul in our midst with a want for taking on fearsome inter enemies with not a shred of concern for her own well being. Your eyes, friend, they speak to me. They say yes. I shall vanquish these rogue vegetables and deliver the purloined goods back to their rightful owner. Alright. You are truly a godsend, adventurer. When Sun Himal of the Yellow Jackets has been charged 
with defending the roads from the mandragoras. If anyone would have knowledge of their current whereabouts, it would be him. I'm guessing I'm fixing to do another like trial or something. Without those ingredients, Master Gugu Rimu is like to cook me instead. Please, friend, you're my only hope. Alright. A gentleman would never let a lady face danger alone. Let us away to Limsa together. Okay. That was, that was bad. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, no. Limsa. Oh, man. <laughs> what am I doing in Limsa? Oh, I just realized where I had to go. Oh. Well, there's not a lot of people here. This is not too bad today. If you've come for the mandragoras, I fear you're half a bell too late. As were, as were we, blast it all. To hear the poor merchant tell it, no sooner had he opened his cargo hold to check on a shipment of vegetables and then did an onion turn on him, screeching bloody murder. Okay. Fled his own vessel in sheer terror, he did. By the time he came to his senses, it had set sail without him. Uh-oh. Merchant left for Aleport, hoping to recoup his losses. If you've a mind to go after the culprits, you might lend an ear to his sad tale. Ah, is the thrill of the chase not invigorating, friend? The ferry docked by Fisherman's Bottom will carry us to Aleport. Let us swiftly be on our way. Right. Or I'll just do this. <laughs> I'll just pour it over there. It's fine. Don't sneak up on me like that. I thought you were a feral turnip, a murderous eggplant, or something like that. I think I jest you. You'd be singing a different tune if a shot of tomato juice almost took your eye out, as it did my, my eye. <laughs> By the time I'd regained my wits, they'd already set sail with me ship and me livelihood. I'm ruined. Ruined. If I never see another bleeding onion till the end of my days, it'll be too soon. Poor guy. Seeds of. Okay. The tiny trader would ask you. Okay. To hear Mo say it, the mandragoras are a nasty lot. A right pain in the arse to farmers and provisioners the realm over. But let me tell you, friend, that ain't the least of it. Freeing their fellow fronds from our ladder larders and tables is but the beginning. The bulbous blackguards have a far grander scheme. Revolution! Madness, you say? Take a ferry to the Isles of Umbra and see with your own eyes. A veritable vegetable kingdom where eggplants and turnips rule with an iron fist. Hmm, this muscle-bound fellow with the dim expression. I could swear I've seen his face somewhere before. Bugger me if it ain't the undead overlord who fancies himself a gentleman inspector. Which would make you, ah, could it be? The adventurer what bested the thieving duelist in single combat? Yes. Yes, I did. Well, bugger me and call me inspector. Tell me, is it true the duelist traveled with a demon bird whose crow could split the heavens? Yes. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Look, I don't know about you, but I ain't so keen on the notion of calling a bloody tomato your grace. And that's exactly the fate we're in for if we don't nip this revolution in the bud. And I mean that literally. As we speak, the mandragoras are planting themselves a whole army of their own kind on the Isles of Umbra. You'd be doing the whole realm a favor if you'd go up there and uproot them before the harvest comes. Okay. Many a case have I solved in my day, but I've not matched wits with sentient plant life before. This should prove quite exhilarating. To the Isles of Umbra. How do you get to the Isles of Umbra? Can I fly? 
Boys like it. I'm a fly. So there's a dungeon in over here. I don't know what it's called. Pharaoh Sirius. I don't remember this one. Ooh, excuse me. Oh, this is going to be good. PlayStation symbols. <laughs> you feel a hostile gaze upon you. Oh no. Hmm. More PlayStation symbols. You feel a hostile gaze upon you. Oh no, you guys. Something hostile is looking at me. It's the first time I've been on that mount with the music on. Oh, there's new symbols. There's a music note and a dollar sign. Do I have to sink to this? I need to click on this. Impeccably fought, my friend. I only wish I had seen the battle with my own eyes. You may go on ahead to Costa del Sol. I shall be along as soon as I are Hey, okay, kill the brand. Okay. Hey, Marine, how are you? You returned! I feared you might end up a tasty snack for a crazed head of cat. <laughs> Me too! I hate mice. I do too. They're awful. Do you have mice in your house? The stolen food stuff. You've saved my hide today. Oh, but I must see if those purple dragon peppers are intact. Master Gugurumu is quite particular about his seasonings. Oh, can I come too? I've never seen a purple dragon pepper before. That wild vegetable chase was a pleasant diversion, but it is time we return to the case. Now, there must be some clue that yet eludes us. Cora, the peppers have changed color. What's this? Peppers that possess the same powers of disguise as our many-faced foe? A gentleman m must needs investigate. Hell no, this house will never have them. My sister's on the other hand. 
They're blue! A striking shade of blue, quite far from the purple that Master Lewin Hart described. Perhaps we recovered their own crate? But look here, Inspector. The crate is clearly marked for Costa del Sol. How curious. Did I say purple? I meant a purplish blue. Or a bluish purple? The two colors are really quite similar when you think about it. Ugh! Those peppers have a most distinctive hue. No man could reasonably mistake it for any shade of purple. Unless, of course, he was wearing a very particular sort of eyewear at the time. Get him! The stove, dishwasher, fridge, washer, dryer, the walls, the attic, the ceilings, all of them? Ha! The charade is up. After the man. It is as I suspected all along. The goggles have proved the key to cracking the case with speed. Now shoe, the fiend must be brought to judge. Oh god, that's bad. Oh, is he dead? It's one thing after the next at the house. Gotta fix the plumbing, too. You can run, but you cannot. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my gosh. Haha, <laughs> if you thought you could outsprint this Mandrible man, you were sorely mistaken. For pilfering a priceless blade, threatening a maiden's virtue, and untold crimes against the law inviting citizens of Eorzea, I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, hereby place you under arrest. Dude's dead. Done in by a sniper. A snipper. A fitting in for an ignoble thief. Let's see what lies behind the mask. Not dead. Not the actual guy, because he just didn't get the right peppers. Oh, where am I? Who are you? Ha! Playing the fool will avail you not. I suggest you come willingly. A gentleman is not given to violence, but should you attempt to resist, I disavow responsibility for any shattered skulls and broken bones. Okay. Wait, I remember now. I was on my way to meet Miss Ar with Miss Arabelle when... Miss Arabelle! I must find her at once! Oh, my head! messaged me oh it would seem that this man wears no mask this is the true lewin heart no shit i swear on my life that it is so i was en route to the estate in wineport when one of the brass blades on patrol approached me we exchanged greetings and the next instant he turned on me I fought desperately to defend myself, even managing to drive a kitchen knife into the man's right hand. In the end, though, he proved too strong for me. Well, now that I have a way to identify him, if his hands hurt. Now that you mention it, the imposter was wearing gloves. I knew there was something suspicious about him. There is still time before the banquet begins. Knowing our quarry, he has doubtless already assumed a new identity. And yet he could not have foreseen this turn of events. It is unlikely that he had time to thoroughly research his new target. Most importantly, we know not we now know that the thief suffered a wound to his right hand. We simply need to return to Costa del Sol and examine the hands of all present. 
An excellent plan, Inspector. Look at his hands first. While you do so, we shall accompany Lou and Hart back to the estate, that we might ensure Miss Arabella's safety. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I have found you, my little ones. Let me guess. You seethe with anger at those that took from you what was yours. Then it would appear our girls are in accord. Make the Costa del Sol and await my orders. When the time is right, revenge will be yours. Great. <laughs> Wonderful. The game is afoot, inspectors. Now, what mask sh shall I wear to the ball? Dun dun dun! Oh, you bastard me. What is this? Oh, that's cool looking. Is that the Insinger weapon? That's cool looking. Oh. <laughs> Miss Arabella, what are you doing out here? You must return to the estate at once. Oh, Lewin, always the warrior. Your concern is touching, but I am a, gro a woman grown. Besides, I just wanted to see the flowers. Lovely though these flowers may be, they are as unsightly... They are as unsightly weeds when measured against your beauty. I am Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire. Please, call me Hildy. The pleasure is mine, my lord. Much have I heard of your deeds. Tell me, are these rumors of a many-faced thief true? I fear they are, Miss Arabella, but still your gentle heart. For as long as Hildebrand is on the case, the fiend shall not lay a twisted finger upon you. This I swear on the Manderville name. The gods smile on me indeed to send such a strong and handsome gentleman as my camp champion. And yet, they sigh. You seem pensive, my lady. Is something the matter? To tell the truth, this marriage has been arranged against my wishes. I do not love Vance. Why, I have not even met him. He sent me this clasp as a betrothal gift. A treasure for my treasure. Wear it always, the message said. I do not care how beautiful it is. It might as well be a, sh a golden shackle. Miss Arabella, you must not say such things. An arranged marriage to a youth you have not even met? Unconscionable. Father says that this marriage must happen, that it is for the future of the family trade. Spoken like a true old on. But if I may be bold, my lady, would I be correct in assuming that you and your father are not related by blood? Quite so. Father found me amongst the beggars on Pearl Lane when I was just a babe. He took me in and raised me as his own. He took Lewin in as well, though as a servant rather than a son. You may think Father a cold and miserly man, but to me he is the man who gave me warmth and hope where I had none. 
I will learn to love bands if that will make my father happy. Don't do it. You cannot be serious, Miss Arabella. You are a beautiful young woman with your whole life ahead of you. Surely you would not have to look far to find a gentleman with whom you'd rather spend the rest of your days. If I have to spend another hour with you, I'm like to lose my wits. <laughs> but anyway, we should return to Costa del Sol and see how the inspector's investigation fares. I, as well, must prepare for the banquet. Farewell, friends. Bum bum. Okay, I've used the restroom real quick, you guys. Thou, what are you cussing at? I heard you through the wall. What's this? Oh, that's so pretty. That's really cool looking. Hey, what's the dancer weapon look like? Hildebrand, a case of indecency. We have not a moment to lose, friend. The time of our final confrontation with the fiend is nigh. You already linked it to me. I missed that. Bloom, feather, okay. I'll look at it in just a second. Our foe has doubtless assumed a new identity, but have no fear. Upon our return to Costa del Sol, I shall employ the time-tested Mandreville art of parlay to cut through the fiend's flimsy facade. Okay. Tis an art that I would impart to you as well, friend. Though there will be time enough for that once our foe is in shackles and Miss Arabella is safe. No doubt it shall prove as invaluable in your adventures as it has in my investigations. Or failing that, serve to entertain you when you have nothing better to do. But I digress. A gentleman must away to Costa del Sol. The fair maiden's life hangs in the balance. Not you, Miss Ellie, with me. Alright. Oh, that's cool again. I like how they spread out like that. That's cool. are sparkly. Is that the ultimate weapons? Those are cool looking. Ooh, sparkly. Briardin. Spectre Briardin. I have seen to the maiden's safety. Miss Arabelle will be along soon. How fair is your investigation? One day you will have the ultimate weapons, I'm sure. 
Don't you? Isn't it only out for a limited time? No. So, like, I can go do ultimate right now? Like, on one of the older ones? Can you solo any of them? It's in the game forever. Okay. I have canvassed the grounds, but none of the guests are concealing their hands. How can this be? The thief must be somewhere. No. Forced sink. Okay. Miss Sarah Bell just left her estate, I hear. I suppose we'll find out soon enough if her beauty is truly a match for her own. Tee hee. You gotta earn it. Gotcha. There's no time. Without the thief and Custy, we cannot risk allowing Miss Arabelle to take the stage. But Inspector, Baines and his family will not take kindly to his betrothed's absence. Hmm, that is not my concern. Besides, doubtless the Inspector here will think of something. Me? What do you propose? You're the expert at creating diversions. Can't you just knock something over, blow something up, or the like? You know, like you always do. He already blew something up. Spectre Briargen. I knew the day would would come that you recognized my many talents. Worry not about Mr. Vane's. Yes, for the sake of the maiden, a gentleman will do what must needs be done. The poor sop lacks even the wits to know when he's being insulted. Now to the task at hand. We must find a way to conceal Miss Arabelle's true identity. Not far from here are the servants' quarters. There should be a change of clothes lying about. Perfect. Miranda, find some suitably ordinary garb and deliver it to Miss Arabelle outside the gates. I shall proceed with the investigation. Okay. One of these days I'm going to mount on all of these animals and just listen to the music. Has the Lapis Maiden arrived yet? I simply must look upon her beauty for myself. Servant's garb, you say? I much prefer what you're wearing, but we certainly have enough rags to go around. Here you go. Do with them as you will. <laughs> Greetings, friend. Oh, what's this you have for me? Put on these. Servant's garb? But why? Miss Arabella, with the thief still at large, the risk of letting you be seen is too great. Change into those clothes and promise that you will not leave my sight. But the ceremony, father will be furious, and Lord Baines. We are dealing with a man who tried to blast me into the heavens and almost succeeded. We cannot exercise enough caution. As for the ceremony, I have entrusted the matter to a certain gentleman. You need only concern yourself with your own safety. We should do as the inspector says, Miss Arabella. Your life is more important than this marriage, or whatever profits your father stands to gain from it. We went if father heard you saying such things. I should have said them long ago. By not doing so, I have put your life in danger. Besides, we have not one but two skilled inspectors on the case. It will not be long until the fiend is brought to justice. So these two are going to run away and get married, right? Very well. I shall retreat into the carriage. Pray wait for me here. My apologies for the delay. What should I do with my banquet dress, Inspector? Miranda, bring Miss Arabella's dress to that bumbling Inspector. I dare not speculate as to how he intends to see his task, but I would imagine he requires all the help he can get. Now, let us return before the festivities begin. Thanks. So those two are gonna run off and get married, right? Cause the little prick doesn't deserve her. Whoops. Whoops. There we go. I missed! Ah, you return. Me? I was in the act of formulating a master plan to strike Master Veins at the ceremony. Is there aught I might do for you? Why, this is Miss Sarabella's dress. I must admit to some confusion as to what to do with it, but worry not. I shall take it into safekeeping. 
And with that, I must descend to Master Veins before the ceremony begins. Worry not, friend. I assure you that Inspector Briarden and I have the situation under entirely under control. Why not find yourself a seat and enjoy the festivities? Um. Okay, let's see where this goes. Has Preach done this questline yet? Curious. Curses, how am I supposed to find my man with all these people milling about? Friends, family, business associates. I'm just wondering if Preach has done, or Mike, since I, I was listening to a, a drama time today. Um, like his latest one. And he said he doesn't want to be called Preach anymore. He wants to just be called Mike. He's been trying to change his name since like two, what did it say? 2015? I don't remember. Six or seven years ago. He's, that's nothing new. I, I didn't know it until today, so. Tis an honor and pleasure to welcome one and all to Costa del Sol for today's feast. Co-hosted by Bruger Consortium and the East Aldenard Trading Company. We trust that you've been enjoying fine foods, fine spirits, and profitable conversation. The Lapis Maiden. If even half the tales of her beauty are true, Venice is the luckiest bastard in the realm. Galto Malto, Sina, honored guest. It's a ple great pleasure to announce the betrothal of my son, Vance, future chair of the Bruguer Consortium, to Arabella, daughter of Master Gugurumu, of the East Aldenard Trading Company. The couple would exchange their eternal vows here today, and the happiness that there may usher in a new era of prosperity for one and all. He's got gloves on! There's your thief! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present my son's lovely bride, the Lapis Maiden, whose beauty minstrels will sing of for ages to come. Oh, please be Hildebrand! Please be Hildebrand in the dress. Please. She's just beautiful. Hmm. Were the rabble expecting otherwise? She is my bride. Oh my god. I can't wait. It is. Well, lady, they say your beauty transcends even the boundaries of time. When we are wed, you will want for nothing. Pray, give give your hand unto me. He's not even... <laughs> My son in stars. Yes, yes, a thousand times yes. I am yours and shall be for... <laughs> What have you done with my bride, you cross-dressing deviant? He would have ripped that dress, for the record. Oh, not what I- not quite what I had intended, but I serves, suppose it serves our purposes. Fear not, ladies and gentlemen, for Miss Arabella is safe and sound. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, have but assumed the maiden's appearance to ensnare the vile fiend who would take aim at her wife. That's, yeah, great. Just tell him the whole plan. He's even got his hair braided! <laughs> oh no. What is he gonna do? The fiend who now lies defenselessly before me. The game is up, Vans. Or shall I call you by another name? The thief of many faces. Me, the thief? Are you mad? It appears that my masterful deductions have proved beyond the grasp of your mind. Very well. Allow me to elucidate. <laughs> Great. <laughs> While there is not a soul in the realm who has not heard the tales of Miss Arabella's beauty, there are but two men here in Costa del Sol who had gazed upon her lovely visage before today. Her father and her steward. 
As you yourself admitted on multiple occasions, Master Vance, you were right to have your first glimpse of your bride-to-be today. Consider in this light, would you not say your reaction upon seeing my face was most unnatural? Who else could see through my ingenious disguise? Who could know that at a glance that I was not the fair maiden? None save you, ye of a thousand faces. And anyone else with half their wits about them. How dare you make a mockery of my wedding day. Guards, arrest that pervert at once. Lock him up in a gal and throw away the key. Arabella, oh thank the gods you're safe. Come with me quickly, there's a dangerous madman about. Yeah. Really. A glove on his right hand. Could it be? Yeah! He was right! <laughs> but yeah, he has done the- Oh man, I gotta find that and watch it. Ah, that nose though, not even a mother could Ahaha, ha, ha, the man is a fool, but it would have behooved you to listen to him. Alas, you did not, and what what is yours is now mine. That's the thief! Stop wasting your time with that imbecile and arrest him! Ah, that's him at Selk's thing. I don't like it. Oh no. You came all this way for me? You love me. You really, really love me. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, he's after the necklace. The attention is most flattering, but I have taken what I came for, and now I must away. My lords, my ladies, till we meet again. I know, right? <laughs> oh, she thinks so. How dare anyone do what he did? <sighs> I hear that the real Vans was found bound and gagged in a storage room. Truly, Miss Arabelle, I am sorry. No, you're not. <laughs> Don't be. For what, my lady? The banquet was more exciting than I could, ever could have hoped for. Vans and his father were furious, of course, and our marriage has been called off. But perhaps it is for the best. I would find my own way to make father happy by living my life as I would live it. It is you, Inspector Hildebrand, who taught me this lesson. <laughs> For the love of God, somebody find him a change of clothes! <laughs> but one thing still puzzles me. The thief's challenge said he would steal the lapis maiden's virtue, yet in the end he only took her neck piece. Now that you mention it, Master Gugur Gugurumu told me about the clasp when it first arrived. Engraved with the mark of the sun goddess, it is one of the most treasured pieces from the Ruger collection, known by many as Azima's vir Virtue. Azima's Virtue. The Maiden's Virtue, indeed. When the next challenge card comes, we must take extra care to read between the lines. Oh, good lord. <sighs> I 
There it is. Right in his forehead again? Nope. Oh, the poor onion! <gasps> oh no! Over here, Inspector, it says there made you look. The fiend plays us for fools. Give that to me at once. When next we meet, I shall come to claim the victor's spoils. Hmm, <laughs> another riddle. This guy, yeah. If nothing else, it appears the thief has abandoned any foolish notions of my assassination. <laughs> Still, we must ever be on guard. The fiend attempted murder once. He may very well do so again. Verily, Inspector, I must agree. One can never be too wary when dealing with a murderer. Hear me, man of a thousand faces. You sealed your fate when you called me out by name. Mark my words, when next me we, you will be mine. Yes, it was the phantom thief who was to blame for that bomb. <laughs> Truly, verily, indubitably the phantom thief. Most certainly. <laughs> that poor onion. So do these come out, like, with patches? Or are they just, the parlay minigame is now available. Oh! Okay. So, this one that's coming out with this patch, it's only part of it. It's like the first episode or whatever. Are there, what, four? To the victor goes a priceless treasure. All the smile of a champion holds secrets untold. Are eight legs better than two? Can a mandible man triumph over terrors and win the day? The Colosseum Conundrum. How many, like, episodes are there? Three, four? I feel like they like to do things in three and four. The key to the next case is also the key to the storeroom. Be sure not to lose a few. Wait, it's a real key and a figurative one? <laughs> it's not even more. I guess we'll find out. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I know all about the toy chest. <laughs> I think this person is doing the same thing I'm doing. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> you should go play it. Oh, yes, the latest information on the Phantom Thieves target. Miranda, I was wondering when you'd show up. I've got the latest scoop on the Victor spoils that our many faced friend has set his sights on. Have you visited the Coliseum of late? There's a tourney in the works, and it's looking to be a big one the Mithril Cup, sponsored by none other than Am Amagina and Sons Mineral Concern. They say that Master Fergus. Fergus will be furnishing the prizes himself from his personal collection. Small wonder it's captured the attention of Mr. Sticky Fingers. 
You are familiar with the concern, yes? It's only the largest mining interest in the Sultana, after all. Sultanate. The chairman, Master Fragus, sits on the syndicate and possesses such wealth that rumor has it he could buy half the realm if he chose to. He's also renowned for being something of a martial arts enthusiast. With his position affording him little opportunity to test his own skills, he settles for living vicariously through the exploits of others, hence his sponsorship of tournaments like the Mithril Cup. My colleague Ganelon is in Ulda, covering the tourney as we speak. If we were to track him down, I bet he'd be able to give us something to get our investigation started. <gasps> the hiccups. Novin, do you know how many quests is in this? Oh, wait, you need to go this way. Yes, I'm a busy man. If you're looking for small talk, I suggest you look elsewhere. No need to be rude, Ganelon. She's a friend of mine. Now, what say you share your latest findings with us? Uh... Ellie, hmm, if it isn't the Mith Mithril Eyes star reporter. Come to have a laugh at Ganelon's expense before returning to your pen- Returning to pen your latest front page feature, eh? Well, very well. Just promise you'll put in a good word for me with the higher-ups, okay? Now, let me tell you this. There's strange things afoot at the Coliseum. Bugger all! It's a travesty, I tell you. Oh my. There's four in the one you're on. Okay. Hot you and hey Hamo, whatever's the matter? And where, pray tell, is Hutchin? The four of you will compete in the cup together, yes? I fear that an, an unfortunate mishap has left Hutchin in no condition to fight. We were just on our way to convey the dire news to Dower Meadow. Oh no! Mishap? My arse. This was sabotage. Some bloody coward out there will stop at nothing to eliminate his competition. I swear it on my subligar. Lower your voice, Hotch. My head sings enough without your bloody shouting. Hutchin, should you not be resting your wounds? Oh, but forgive your incompetent, unworthy comrade. If I had been quicker with my mantra, we would still be four men strong. They're, uh... Their outfits are something. Do not berate yourself so, Haimo. Hi in victory and in defeat, the... Mantravilles fight as one. You bear no more responsibility for my wounds than I. Oh no. Any road, I dare say I'll not be getting back into fighting but oh, by arsing about in bed. I'm ready to chant some mantras. How about the lot of you? Hutchin, for you I am always ready. Now that's what I like to hear. A thousand mantras and I want each one to ring out over the Sagoli. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I don't know. The Mantravilles. Ah, yes. Hutchin tells that they took their name from a training partner they met at the Fist of Railgar. A man they must admired for his devotion and chiseled physique. Oh. Consider me not the least bit interested. This talk of attacks on the competitors, however. Of this I would hear more. Ah, yes, I mentioned that strange things were afoot, yes? With mere days left before the Mithril Cup, a staggering number of would-be combatants have withdrawn, citing a host of curious elements and injuries. With the list of entrants shrinking by the day, the organizers have been forced to abandon the elimination format in favor of a mass melee between what few battlers remain. 
The Phantom Thief's Challenge. Gladiators dropping like flies. No, this is no mere coincidence. I would speak to the individual in charge of the event. Where might I find him? Though the concern sponsor's attorney, the day-to-day -day organizational duties are being handled by a fellow by the name of Dower Meadow. He should be in his office within the Coliseum's halls. I'll send word to the gentleman, Yu Baya. He, own, he owes the Mithril Eye a favor, too. Splendid. Come, Miranda. We've got a case to crack. Um, I'm on eight armed and dangerous. From mithril eye you say then by all means you are free to enter <laughs> oh, excuse me i am ellie reporter for the mithril eye never blinking all seeing you know the deal yes and you must be dar metal i was hoping i could ask you a few questions about the upcoming tourney Har har har. Who am I to argue with free publicity? And from a charming little thing like yourself. Ask away, my girl. That said, between the challenge from that so-called phantom thief and now these bizarre attacks targeting the fighters, our attorney is already the talk of the town. Now that you'll see me- not that you'll see me complaining, provided someone's still left to fight, that is. You're free to investigate as you were. But you'd be smart to exercise some caution. Needless to say, recent events have everyone here a bit on edge. Why, just moments ago, one fighter almost took off another's head for insulting the color of his sub subbleep. Looks like we've got our ourselves another. Hmm. Those two aren't in the entry books. Oh, Jesus. And our challenger unleashes a vicious right hook as the gentleman inspector was channeling his strength for his next attack. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. What is with these outfits? They look like they belong in a dungeon. Inspector Briarden has as efficient as ever, I see. A true gentleman excuse violence, inspector. You were thinking. It annoyed me. <laughs> this guy's a prick. Dower Meadow, I presume? Tell me everything you can about the prizes for this tourney. And try to be brief. Was wondering what you might ask. Excuse me. Master Fergus has spared no expense in making the Mithril Cup the most lucrative tourney the Colosseum's ever seen. The victor will receive a true treasure from his collection, the Warden's Grace, a ring fitted with the largest sun spear you'll find outside of Karn. The second and third place prizes are nothing to sneeze at neither, but I don't care how many faces he's got. We've nothing to fear from this thief. The Concern has hired an elite regiment of stone torches to watch over the vault day and night. Yes, just as the brass blades were so successful in stopping the thief last time. If you want your treasure safe, go fetch them and bring them to me. And be quick about it. I haven't all day. Fear can't do that, Inspector. After all, what proof do you have that you ain't Mr. Mini Vases and another of his elaborate get-ups? Now, if you want to get your hands on the spoils, you'll have to claim them as any other would in battle. As a matter of fact, what, what with the ranks thin as they are, we're actively recruiting new competitors. The more the merrier, and the more lucrative at that. Gar har har. So I, I gotta think about what he's stolen, because I've been through two episodes, I guess is the right way to put it. I don't remember the first thing he stole. <laughs> now 
Now, where did our receptionist get off to? Over here, you slimy bugger. We've got some fresh blood for the melee. Give me a moment, will ya? I've only got eight arms. Or were they legs? Ah! Slobbering cephalopod. Called? I was just about to give the lovely Miss Avila the grand tour. Inspector Hildebrand, look! He's purple! Astute as ever, Nashu, this color, the, this overabundance of appendages. I smell a case. Okay. The purple octo, it is? Now that's just my receptionist, Ultros. Don't be startled now. He's an ugly little bugger, but he's friendly enough. Word has it, he was one of many bizarre creatures born from a recent experiment with ancient incantations at the Thaumaturgy Guild. They were going to steal him away in a hole in the desert with the others when he opened his slobbering mouth and started pleading for his life. I just want to live in peace. I'll do anything, anything. So he managed. So the management hired him to perform odd jobs about the Coliseum. So what is it? It's a character from Final Fantasy VI or a boss or something. And am I ever glad they did. I tell you, this job ain't glamorous, but it sure has its perks. It's a boss? What a delicious morsel. I want to get my tentacles around her. Whoa. Okay. I, did, I don't want any hentai in my video game, please. I know not who you are or where you hail from, and I do not care. If you dare challenge me, my Tempest Blade will show you no mercy. You can forget about your case, Inspector. There is only one who will claim the victor's spoil. And that is me. Oh, I just love it when she talks to What? <laughs> now, who's the chump who wanted to get... A pummeling by my lovely little Avi. A gentleman takes far more pride in my screen fair damsels than fighting them. I fear we have little recourse. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, shall do what must be done to. Miranda Mus. Oh, thanks for asking! Somebody finally recognizes me. You do look like a Musai. Will bugger me with a spear to think I'd see the day when a warrior of light stood in my coliseum. I know he was. Hear that clink, clink, clinkin'? That's the sound of Gil pouring into our coffers when the public finds out that a true Eorzean hero will be stepping into the ring for, to fight for the Mithril Cup. Oh, and I reckon your friend can tag along too. Show them where to sign it, ulti. Val. Did you drop your cup? Did you drop your cup? I got a cup. Okay. I'm just fixing to go check on him. <laughs> with Miranda, I suppose we have as good a chance as any. Now we just need to make sure that she doesn't come down with some curious injury. That gladiatrix, a villa, was it? She's seemed quite certain of her chances at victory. Suspiciously certain, I would say. Okay. Haha, -ha, I am already ten steps ahead of you, Inspector. That Ultros fellow seemed most knowledgeable about Miss Avila. Av Avila? What is with these outfits? Like, what? Is this a bondage dungeon? What the hell? Come, Nashu, the investigation is... It's gotta be! The... 
dressed up in these freaky outfits and they got a tentacle monster ready to attack women? It's just a hentai area. What the hell is going on in Ulda? As much as that sounds like an amazingly productive line of investigation, might I suggest that our first priority is to keep Miranda here safe. Let us return to Ganulet. Gainlon, and see what else he can tell us of these mysterious attacks of the com combatants. I wish this was voiced so they could say names, and I under and I knew what the names were. <laughs> Very well, I shall leave the task to you. I have a lead of my own to investigate. Should you uncover any new information, I trust you will share it with me at first opportunity. You again? I've already told you that- What? You entered the tourney, you say? Are you out of your bleeding mind? Nope. Look, I've got a suspicion or two, which I'm happy to share with you. But in the end, you, you have to protect yourself, you hear? Okay. Oh, Marine, I owe you push-ups. So I've been asking around, and it seems that more than a few of the fighters who pulled out of the tourney were scheduled to fight by warrioress by the name of Avila. See you, octopus dude. Hey, yo, what are you doing? You okay, Cooper? You're walking again. You're crying. She's walking weird. And she smells funny. She needs a bath tomorrow, I think. Hmm. Yeah, she needs a bath tomorrow. Maybe wash her beds too. One, two, three, four, five. Four. Uh, oh, excuse me. Oh, it's raining. I can't make any promises, but my instincts tell me this girl is bad news. But don't take it from me when you can hear it from someone who crossplays with her just days ago. Fellow by the name of Rage and Rat had the misfortune of being matched up with Avila in the preliminary round and earned himself a right bruising from it all. Last I heard, he was resting back up at the Pugilus Guild. Why don't you pay him a visit? Nope. 
Come to have a good laugh at old Rage and Rat expenses, have you? Well, you're not the first. I say, is there not a man in this entire realm with an ounce of sympathy? Greetings, good sir. How fortunate you are today that your guest is Hildebrand Manderville, gentleman inspector. Now, if you would, please, enlighten me to how exactly it was that you were beaten to a bloody pulp by Miss Avila. <laughs> okay. Gentlemen, my ass, have you not a wit of de delicacy? Never you mind. Look at the rec- Look, the records may say I lost, but I'll admit to nothing of the sort. I'll shout it at the top of my lungs if no one else will. That girl doesn't fight fair. Tempest Blade? Some kind of foul sorcery, if you ask me. Mark my words, that girl is up to no good. If she weren't so damn easy on the eyes, she'd be rotten in a gal as we speak. Tempest Blade. So, he's probably after the blade. Instead of the prize. But what? Hmm. The girls all amigan, or haven't you heard? You know how it is with those refugees. Why fight with honor when you've got nothing to lose? Yes, and why not disparage an entire people in a pathetic attempt to salvage your sorry pride? This one's a real piece of work, Miranda. Let's be on our way. I didn't mean no offense, miss. Just tell it like it is, as it were. Okay. Perhaps it truly is some manner of sorcery, as the fellow says. Or perhaps she works with an accomplice. She didn't strike me as the magic-wielding type. If I were a betting woman, I'd put my gill on the ladder. Ah, Miss Ellie, the thrill of the chase has struck a chord with you as well. Yes, I can see it in the wrinkles beneath your eyes. Oh! We might very well make an inspectress of you yet. I'll give you a good wrinkle, you insensitive bore. <clears throat> if what the man says is true, it's likely that her fellow Alamegans might sympathize with her plight. An accomplice would be hardly out of the question. Yes, I can see it now. Two unfortunate souls, shunned by those around them, united by destiny and a common desire for justice. Yay. What are you doing? Again? Didn't you just go to the bathroom? Hmm. Ample appendages whirling wildly, sending gusts of wind flying every which way. Avila and Ulti, a match made in the heavens. Were it any more obvious, I could have solved this case without leaving my home. Are you having fun? Am I distracting you? Yes. Go away. Incredible. Your powers of deduction never fail to amaze, Inspector. Ellie, what? What is with the two of you and that infernal octopus? Mr. Ultra should still be at the Coliseum. Let us hurry before he slithers back off to whencesoever he came. Okay. Back over this way. To the Coliseum. What time is it? It's 10.20? Ugh. friend and look over yonder behold those exquisite what are you doing kizzy hmm. behold those exquisite legs those stylish tentacles the unearthly undulations of his squirmy squishy body Yes, our friend Ulti is a most fascinating creature indeed. He's a pervert is what he is. Behold how carefully 
How he carefully eyes the gladi gladiatrix before him. What manner of mischief is he plotting? Nothing good. He speaks. Yes, this is most suspicious indeed. Oh ho, what's this? The girl has fled in a panic. Our friend Ulti appears to be discouraged. Look at the way his shoulders sag. He doesn't have shoulders. Or how they would sag if he had shoulders. <laughs> That's such a lovely noise that they play when he moves. Our quarry is on the move. Quickly now, she must pursue. Which is your puppy. It's a lot of back and forth with this one. Do you do more fighting when you get like further in the quest? See, he's a pervert. Aha, there he is. You will not escape us so easily, Mr. Ultros. Mr. Ulti seems to have found himself another gladiatrix. What might be what might he be plotting this time? Look at those succulent legs. I reckon they'd taste just wonderful in a good marinara sauce. No, a butter sauce. Oh, marinara sauce. Ah, he speaks. She's gonna beat him with her frying pan. And another girl rushes off. Whatever did he say to her? He looks so sad. Shall we douse him in lemon butter and put him out of his misery, Inspector? Whatever is he doing with these girls anyway? <laughs> Call me crazy, but I think he likes them. Brand is contemplating the implication of Ultros' behavior. Is he now? Starting to lose my voice. Not good. Poor misunderstood Ulti. Here we suspected him of criminal activity, when in truth he was just a gentle soul, luckless in love. Oh, Ulti, can you find it in your squishy, slimy heart to forgive us? Yes, yes. Now perhaps we should return to our investigation. If a villa is as suspicious as, suspicious as they say, perhaps we should follow her around for a bit. Dower Meadow back at the Coliseum should be able to enlighten us as to her whereabouts. An excellent idea, Miss Ellie, but I have a better one. Let us return to the Coliseum and speak with Dower Meadow. From him we shall ascertain Miss Avila's whereabouts, upon which we shall follow her about to see if she is indeed as suspicious as they say. Come, Nashu, the investigation calls. Okay. Don't think Uncle Ulti didn't see you following me. What's the big idea? I'm nothing more than a stupid octopus. Hee hee hee. Or am I? Come on now, I just want what any octopus wants. A cute girl, untold riches, and the admiration of millions. Can't up oh, ulti dream. Oh, he's so gross. That's so weird. Well, kids hate to ink and run. Then again, I am an octopus. It's so weird. Yes, what is it this time? I'm a busy man. Looking for a villa, you say? She said something about sharing a flagon with her countrymen over at the coffer and, coffer and coffin. I reckon you might still find her there. I'll warn you, though. If you're smart, you'll keep your distance from that one. 
that poor bugger Ganglion tried to interview her for an article. Though thought the girl was gonna rip his head clean off. How could I put this? Hey, Sil, thanks for the sub! I am losing my voice. How are you doing? How can I put this? She doesn't seem to take kindly to being asked questions of a personal nature, if you catch my drift. Great. That said, if you're looking for a good sparring match to warm you up for the tourney, that might be just the ticket. Har har har. I can issue you, show you all right now. Getting over a headache and I'm oh, that's not fun. I'm apparently fixing to lose my voice, so that's gonna be fun tomorrow. I always, like if I get a migraine, I'm down and out for like three hours, three four hours. I have to sleep it off. I can't. I've tried taking stuff. I just have to sleep. It's and it's hard to go to sleep too. Hey, I'm losing my voice. Oh no! You're such Whatever an. Whatever will we do? You're such an ass. Oh no! Goodness. Goodness. Are you going to bed? It's ten after ten o'clock. Almost ten thirty. He's such an ass, you guys. Oh no! Shut up. Why are not, you so mean to me? Not your voice. Why are you so mean to me? I'm not mean to you. Really? I could so, be a lot meaner. He's such a bully. I could cheer. <laughs> I can assure you there will be no need for gratuitous fisticuffs, my good sir. <laughs> With my remarkable what? powers of, in of espionage, we will ascertain all the information we need without the fiery lass even being alerted to our presence. Let us be off. I don't think I need to keep going with this quest because it's all going to be reading. I think I may need to stop for the night for two reasons. What's the other reason? Well, you're wanting to go to bed. <laughs> Did you let the dog out? She's right there. I know. Did you let her out before you... Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. What was that? I didn't quite catch you. I hate you. <laughs> Alright, you guys. Yeah, I am... I am gonna go ahead and stop. Sorry, Sil. <laughs> Whoa. I'm looking for a new husband as well. And That's selling my other one because he's a prick. Stop being so mean to me. Okay. But yeah, I'm I'm gonna go because I'm obviously losing my voice. Uh, I will see how I sound tomorrow before I decide if I'm gonna stream. Tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow is Friday. I am excited. Why is it doing this now? Why? Just in time for the weekend. Go right. Oh Seriously. Selling him <clears throat> to a good home. He stinks though. That's the only problem. Well not the only problem, but that's a big one. But yeah, I'm off for the evening. Maybe stream tomorrow. We'll see if I have a voice. But yeah. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you for the sub, Sil. Y'all have a good one. Bye. Bye. I, I hate you so, so much.